haven't made a video in so long. My school semester, my second to last semester of college, of school for the rest of my life is over tomorrow. I've been studying like a madman this past week for my one exam. I have one exam. It was originally supposed to be Saturday of finals week, but teacher didn't want it to be on Saturday, so he's giving a second option of taking it on Monday, which is what I'm doing because this Friday, I'm going to Colorado. Hillary, Will, Ellie, and I, I don't know if you guys know Ellie, Will has been in the videos, it's his girlfriend. We are all road tripping out to Colorado to go visit some family, and it's gonna be a great time. That all being said, I have done so much work this school year. This semester has been absolutely insane while dealing with everything that came with surgery, dealing with four separate classes, one of them being film classes. All my projects are done, all my presentations are done, I just have one exam tomorrow. That being said, at the beginning of the semester, I told you guys I was going to be making a couple short documentary style videos for a class. I've completed those, I've sent them off to the clients, I know at least one of the clients was happy with their video, and I have a meeting tomorrow to see if the other client was happy. But I thought I'd share those two videos with you guys, they're both under three minutes, and you know, I'm a film student, so I want to share the stuff I'm doing with my filmmaking to show the progression I've made over the past five years of film school, four and a half years of film school. So here are the videos back to back, the two separate videos for two separate clients that we worked with this semester. And all in all, I'm happy with the videos. I think they turned out well. They're very just straightforward, informational, but I tried to add some flair. So hope you guys enjoy it. Growing up, I was a big competitive chess player. I've been playing since I was in first grade. Coming here looking for extracurricular activities, it was pretty obvious chess club was gonna be on the list. Chess club on average has about 20 people that come regularly. Really the main goal is every meeting is exactly the same. We come and you look for someone to play chess with. We have a variety of skill levels. The thing I like most about it is, it is it's exactly what it's presented as. You know, you, it's just an opportunity for people to play chess. There's no, you know, no other responsibilities for being a part of the club. You know, you just show up when you can and you just play. We encourage practice outside. I mean, there's plenty of ways to play online and study online. We usually have two or three tournaments per semester. Those are open tournaments, so those are available not just to Purdue Chess Club members, but there are a lot of uh, local players that come as well. Uh, every now and then, if, if there's demand for it, we'll hold pizza socials or something. We'll take a couple of boards to you know, Mad Mushroom and just have people play there, hold a little speed tournament. All the, the club meetings are always posted on Facebook, Twitter, and Boiler Link, so it's open for anyone to just show up to a meeting. They don't have to ask me first. I really think the best aspect of it is the simplicity. I mean, I always make the joke when I'm at the Be Involved Fair recruiting freshmen that I have the easiest job to describe what the club is. There's really no barriers to entry. You know, if you're interested in the game, you can show up and there will be people for you to play. Playing chess is, you know, it's a mental game, but aside from that, I would say it's a pretty relaxing environment. My name is Rachel Bish. Our research is baited by clickbait. They're trying to pull viewers in. They're trying to get people to read their article. And so in doing that, sometimes they skew the data that they're actually reporting on. Originally, it was for a school project. It was in our class called Evidence-Based Practice. And what we were supposed to do is take a media article and look beyond the headline, look beyond what they were writing about, and look at the original research behind it. And then we looked at three other articles with similar headlines, similar findings. Honestly, we were just trying to see if the article was being honest, doing what it was supposed to say by reporting the research. I think online media is just easier for our generation to grasp. They are so busy in their everyday lives that they just need something, a little snip of, of what's going on in the world. Traditional media, it's just not something that really grasps our generation. They're not wanting to sit down and watching the news because that's not really something they're interested in to do. In a way, you shouldn't skew the data that much by, in the article that we looked at, it was saying that there is findings that might show that there are, we might have evidence why breast cancer exists, and that's skewing the data way, way too much, whereas our findings actually found that people with breast cancer have different microbiomes on their skin, and it's not really showing that 
hey, if you give them antibiotics, it'll cure cancer. It's just showing that here's a difference that we found. Pulling in all those views with something so misleading that gives so many people hope that there is a cure for cancer, it's not really fair to the viewers because not very many people look behind the headline and look beyond what they wrote about in the article to look back on the research. Everyone does have a freedom of speech and it's hard to regulate that. I think that there should be regulations based within news providers that show like we're going to accurately show this data with our headline even if it means that we're not going to get as many viewers. You see it every day. Honestly, if you're on social media, if you're looking through Twitter, you'll probably see 15 or 20 inaccurates just looking through your feed. And it does give false hope for a lot of people that are affected by those things that they're writing on. I just, yeah, I inspire students to look beyond, look at the research of what they're actually showing and make up your own mind if the article was accurate or not. So yes, I'm a film student. I am working on film stuff and that was for an editing class. So all that was edited in DaVinci Resolve. Typically I've been editing in Adobe Premiere Pro, but I've switched over to DaVinci Resolve because guess what? It's free and it's better. And it's sad because that was my last production class of my college career. I have one more semester of school, but I'm not in a production class per se. And it's kind of bittersweet. I'm glad I don't have the busy work anymore, but it was a lot of fun making those videos and I'm happy I got to do it. I need to go back to studying. I need to do well in this exam, not because I'm doing poorly in the class, but because I want to finish strong. And I'm just so bad at history, guys. I just, I can't do it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.